It's a real honor for me to be in front of you today. But as you can see, I'm not really from around here. So I would like to ask the room, who thinks that I am American? Please raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Not that many, okay? Uh, qui pense que je suis française? Levez la main. Un peu mieux, good. Ni show, vous êtes vous êtes chinois, ma? How come? Well, Chinese people say that I am a banana, yellow on the outside and white on the inside. Well, each of you are right. In fact, um, I am Chinese, French, and American. Um, I am lucky to have these three cultures. So when I was first uh, informed about the subject today, Back to the Future, for me, the vision is more back to the roots. Because depending on the culture you are coming from, your vision of the future is different. So today I'm not going to talk to you about science fiction. I would like to talk to you about cultures. The first part of my talk, I would like to try to inspire you about the positive impact of cross-cultural references. Chinese versus Western, for example, and techn how technology can connect the dots in three different areas in our daily life. Mobility, energy, and construction. And the second part of my talk, I would like to share my personal experience and um, try to uh, uh, demonstrate how being multicultural gave me strength to do more challenges and have several different professional lives. So first, as I said, mobility. I took this slide because in the same period of time in the 70s, in China, we only have bicycles. And Western cities, developed countries, full of cars. So as I said, different cultures, we have different needs. And today, as you know, terrible uh, traffic in Chinese cities. And back to the future here, Western cities, we are back to bicycles. Why is that? Well, it's just because for the past 10, 20 years, Chinese middle-class family have, lifestyle have improved a lot. We all want to own a car. So in China, single child policy, but two cars in families work uh, mostly in the cities because uh, both husband and wife work. So as I said, back to the future, back to the roots. Now, energy. You're all familiar now with the landscape of wind farm, wind, uh, ocean wind farm or uh, wind turbines. Thanks to technology, we can build those super structures. But again, back to the future, back to the roots. The idea is not new. Already in medieval Europe, we have invented windmill and water mill in order to create a large scale of power energy. As you know, at the beginning, it's uh, slave labor and then animal labor. Now, third subject, the construction sector. I'm going to spend a little bit more time because I'm an architect. So the basic differences between um, Chinese ancient architecture and Western architecture is basically on the building construction material. Western buildings are built with stone. Great, solemn, solid, beautiful, last forever across the centuries. In Chinese architecture, we have 6,000 years of experience building with wood. It's a great material, it's energy efficient, it's environmental friendly, durable, but unfortunately, it can be destroyed easily by fire. But fortunately, we have still in China, lots of pagodas, temples, uh, built out of uh, timber frame structure foundation and a decorated roof. And we have also invented very sophisticated joint structure using tenon and mortise without any steel inside. Nowadays, in Western countries, as you might know, we are using more and more wood. Thanks to advances in technologies, we can now engineer product wood that are more resistant, fire resistant, and uh, for, for example, we have this uh, uh, what they call the CLT, which is a cross-laminated timber structure technology that allows you, for example, to build this 82-story height 
called Oakwood Tower in London. By the time it's going to be completed, it's going to be the first tallest building, wooden construction in the world. And also, of course, the tallest building in uh, London is also known as the Toothpick. Everywhere else also in the, in the world, here in Norway, in Oslo, you have an 85 meter uh, office building. In Australia, Brisbane, 52 meter uh, apartment building. And in Canada, in Vancouver, you have this uh, trapezoid apartment building, which is built out of the British Columbia local source wood. And not to forget about France, we do have our technological CLT uh, Hyperion Tower that's going to be completed in Bordeaux in 2020, and uh, it's a 17-story mixed-use apartment and office building. So, back to the future, back to the basic, back to the wood construction. Wood is a great material. It releases oxygen and absorbs the carbon. And if we continue um, doing the construction sector with concrete and steel. You have to know that steel would account for 3% and concrete 5% of our global warming effect. And um, by 2050, 75% of the first human beings are going to live in cities. So we really have to find new ways of low carbon ways of building cities. So I would like to talk to you about this technological innovation in the wood, kind of bionic wood. It has been invented by a young French architect under the age of 35. He studied architecture in France and in Japan, and he went to MIT and Harvard. But he didn't study architecture at Harvard and MIT, he studied chemistry. So by being cross-cultural and having different disciplines, he came up, he invented this augmented wood, which is imperishable, translucent, three times stiffer than the natural wood, and most importantly, fire resistant. So the way he did it is he extracted the linen, which is the molecule that gives the rigidity to the wood, and he injected a plant-based resin. You have to know that wood is made of air, 60 to 90% of air. So by filling the void with this uh, green chemistry, this plant-based resin, he kind of reinforced the structure without changing the cellular skeleton. So the applications are numerous. We hope that this going to be, can be the uh, basic material for the next generations of wooden skyscrapers. But for the time being, it can only be used for some luxury products. Since the wood is translucent, it gives a really great aesthetics. It's also used in the industry, automobile industry. And now the company that he set up was planning to change and then to make this wood tactile in order to put the design um, uh, uh, the, the dashboard for the next generations of uh, autonomous vehicles. So as you can see, this uh, person has, has cross cultures and could come up with very innovative ideas with different industries. Now, the second part of my talk, um, I'll try to close the loop and explain to you why I am having three cultures and how being uh, three cultures within myself could give me the strength to go through really challenges and uh, different professional uh, uh, lives. So as I don't know if you remember, as I said, we Chinese people, we really want to own our cars. So I grew up in Asia, and um, I was very proud to be in my father's first car. And then I moved to Europe, eventually actually to France. Um, my mom doesn't even speak French, but eventually I learned the language, and I got a degree in architecture in Paris. But then I wanted to study computer, and I moved to the US. And as uh, uh, Gregory said, I, was, uh, I didn't know anything about coding at the time. Um, but I went for a master's at MIT on a scholarship. So my thesis was actually about the software that I developed in Lisp at that time. It was this ancient AI programming language. 
And my software, my thesis was actually a ancestor of Beam. I am 80 years old. If you doubt, have doubts about it, so um, it's uh, Beam is the building information modeling systems that most architects are using today. So anyway, to make it short, I started my professional career in the U.S. by working with the World Bank for designing a software. And then I was lucky, I was also in the internet, the beginning and the boom of the internet business over there. Um, so I worked, um, I joined startups and I started also my own company that I sold. So I was also investing a little bit now in uh, Asia, uh, companies or in Europe. But so just to tell you how I'm closing the loop, in fact, I went back to China. I went back to my roots. I went back to architecture, and I worked with this French architect who built the Grand Opera of Shanghai, and we built also R&D Center for L'Oreal, Saint-Gobain, great projects. So today, um, I have, my dream has always been to link all the technologies of AI with architecture design. And I'm working uh, with a team where we are hoping to build a platform, an ecosystem to link, to connect the AI community between Europe, US, and China. I would like to end this talk by showing to you this image and the video. I don't know if you're aware, but this is the um, photo of the world longest sea bridge, which is connecting Hong Kong, Macau to mainland China, Zhuhai. This 55 kilometer bridge, uh, $20 billion construction started in 2009, and it has been opened just recently on October 23rd by Xi Jinping. The idea is that to link Hong Kong and Macau with 11 cities in China and to make this region a high-tech region to rival the Silicon Valley. So I hope I have inspired you a little bit about the fact that having different cultures and working in different industries will empower you for a better future. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>